Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about pathogenesis of atopic eczema. It's a very difficult topic and I have tried to simplify as much as possible. If you guys are visiting my channel for the first time, my name is Dr. Namra Aziz. I'm resident dermatology. I make a lot of educational content. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Namra Aziz. A good question to start with would be why do certain people develop atopic dermatitis? In a genetically predisposed person, three things play an important role in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. Epidermal barrier dysfunction, immune dysregulation, and altered microbiome of the skin. Out of these three, first two are considered to be responsible for the main pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. I'll discuss them one by one, but before starting, let's discuss the role of genetics in atopic dermatitis. Genetic factors account for the 90% of susceptibility to early onset atopic dermatitis. With a significantly higher concordance rate in monozygotic twins, 77% compared to 15% in dizygotic twins. A parental history of atopic dermatitis is a stronger risk factor for development of atopic dermatitis than either asthma or allergic rhinitis. Atopic dermatitis is a complex genetic disease and both gene-gene and gene-environment interaction have an important role in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. This is an epidermis of a genetically predisposed person and epidermal barrier function is compromised in this person. Now let's see why this epidermal barrier function is compromised. By epidermal barrier, I mean stratum corneum. Most important reason for the compromise of the epidermal barrier is the filaggrin gene mutation resulting in filaggrin deficiency. Filaggrin is a filament aggregating protein. It's an intracellular protein that aggregates the keratin filaments at the stratum corneum and the breakdown product of the filaggrin provide hydrating factors for the skin. So because of filaggrin deficiency, there is defect in the aggregation of keratin filaments at the stratum corneum, hence the epidermal barrier function is compromised. Secondly, like I said before, the breakdown hydrating product are also deficient which further contributes to the epidermal barrier dysfunction. Another important factor for the epidermal barrier dysfunction is increase in the proteases, for example, calicrin 5 and calicrin 7 and decrease in the protease inhibitor which is encoded by SPING5. The name of the protease inhibitors is LECTI, lymphoepithelial casal type trypsin inhibitor. Can any of you guess a disease which is associated with SPING5 mutation and also has an atopic di diathesis? Yes, Netherton syndrome. Moving forward, like I said that the proteases are increased and protease inhibitors which are encoded by SPING5 are decreased. As a result of which there will be increased breakdown of the proteins and we all know how corneodesmosomes are one of the most important proteins responsible for the integrity of epidermal barrier. Breakdown of these proteins by proteases leads to the decreased integrity of epidermal barrier. Now let's talk about the role of the lipids in epidermal barrier function. Lipids also have an important role in the integrity of epidermal barrier and we all know that laminar bodies present in the carotohyaline granules in the granular layer carry the lipid, carry the essential lipids for the stratum corneum. But because of the filaggrin deficiency, there is defective secretion of the lipid component from the laminar bodies compromising the integrity of epidermal barrier. So three things are responsible for epidermal barrier dysfunction in a patient with atopic dermatitis. Filaggrin mutation, increased proteases and altered lipid content. Now the next important thing for developing atopic dermatitis, like I said before, is immune dysregulation. Because of the defective epidermal barrier, all kind of antigens enter the skin. Like all the antigens, these antigens are presented by the dendritic cells to the naive T cells. Naive T cells differentiate into a Th2 response which is the main type of immune response in the acute flare of atopic dermatitis. It's important to mention here that this Th2 response is an abnormal response to allergen and does not occur in a normal population. Th2 cytokines, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-13 have a role in developing the acute phase of atopic dermatitis. The cytokines profile in atopic eczema at least partly explains the pathology of the disease. Interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 further downregulate the aphylagrin expression in the keratinocyte, thereby inducing further epidermal barrier dysfunction. 
Furthermore, interleukin-4 is also known to down-regulate the expression of cutaneous defensins and increase expression of bacterial adhesion molecule, both of which facilitate Staph aureus colonization in atopic eczema. I will be discussing the role of the Staph aureus colonization in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis shortly. In addition to this, there are certain cytokines which are produced by the keratinocytes, for example interleukin-1, thymic stromal lymphopoietin, interleukin-25, interleukin-33. These cytokines further promote a Th2 response. So it's an interlinked cycle. Because of the Th2 response, certain cytokines are secreted by the keratinocytes which further promote the Th2 response. If you can't remember all of the cytokines produced by the keratinocytes, it's important to remember thymic stromal lymphopoietin. It has a central role in evoking a Th2 response. It also has a role in the itching associated with atopic eczema. In the chronic phase of atopic eczema, there is Th1, Th17 and Th22 response. It's important to note here that Th17 response that we used to study in psoriasis also has a role in atopic dermatitis. All of these were the component of the adaptive immune response. But in addition to adaptive immune response, there is some dysregulation in the innate immune response as well. A certain type of innate immunity cells called as innate lymphoid cells are expanded in the patients with atopic dermatitis which further evoke a Th2 response. Now let's discuss the role of cutaneous microbiome. The cutaneous microbiome represents a complex and highly diverse community of the pathogenic and commensal bacteria, fungi and viruses that play a critical role in epidermal homeostasis. More than 90% of the patients with atopic dermatitis have skin colonized with Staph aureus compared to about 5% of the unaffected patients. During the atopic dermatitis flare, bacterial diversity decreases and the proportion of the microbiome which was contrib contributed by the Staphylococcus species increases from 35% to 90%. Super antigens secreted by Staphylococcus can promote the development of Th2 response. An exotoxin with super antigen properties are produced in up to 65% of the patients with Staph aureus stains that colonize atopic dermatitis patients. As a result of all of this, epidermal barrier fung dysfunction, Th2 response and altered microbiome of the skin, there is inflammation in the skin and increased transepidermal water loss due to the epidermal barrier dysfunction leading to a dry and inflamed skin. So this is pretty much the entire pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. But I think all of you can remember the mechanism of atopy that we all used to memorize in medical school. That after the exposure to the antigen, IgE antibodies are produced against it, which bind to the mast cells and basophils, and when the allergen enters the body again, it binds directly to the IgE antibodies bound to the mast cells, resulting in the immediate response by the release of the histamine and also a delayed response mediated by leukotrienes and prostaglandins. Now it's important to mention here that this mast cell degranulation in the skin is not thought to be the important pathomechanism in atopic eczema. Then why there is increased IgE in patients with atopic eczema and what is its role? The allergen specific IgE antibodies also bind to the cells other than the mast cells and basophils such as Langerhans cells. On Langerhans cells these antibodies enhance the uptake of antigen by these cells Hence, increase the presentation of these antigen to, to the T cells. This crosstalk is very important in the proliferation of allergen specific IgE. And but it's important to emphasize here that role of IgE in the patients with atopic dermatitis is not because of mast cell degranulation, but it's because the IgE antibodies bind to the Langerhans cells and increase the antigen presentation by these cells to the naive T cells, which further generate Th2 response. Patients suffering from atopic eczema can develop urticaria, angioedema, rhinitis, acute asthma and anaphylaxis because of histamine release and there is an increased incidence of these things but the role of IgE in the pathogenesis of atopic eczema remains unclear. And this is the same reason that the non-sedating antihistamines are not effective in the treatment of atopic eczema because histamine release has no role in the pathogenesis of the atopic dermatitis. So the bottom line is, 
Although the dominant component of the skin inflammation in atopic eczema is mediated by T cells, the presence of allergen-specific IgE is likely to be important in the antigen presentation to the T cells as well as veal and flare exacerbation of the disease which are in the form of urticaria and angioedema. Allergic sensitization is likely to be a secondary phenomena in atopic eczema which acts as an important trigger factor for the disease flare and possibly disease chronicity but it is not the primary defect. Uh, now I would like to discuss this diagram. Because of the decreased filigrin, increased proteases and abnormal lipids, there is dysfunctional epidermal barrier. Because of this dysfunctional epidermal barrier, all kind of antigens enter into the skin and are presented by the dendritic cells to the naive T cells and a Th2 response are, is generated. Interleukin 4, 5, 13 play an important role which further down regulate which further downregulate the filigrin in the stratum corneum. IgE is also produced, but the role of this IgE is to bind onto the Langerhans cells and further increase the antigen presentation to the T cells. There is also defect in the innate immune response, and a certain population of the cell called as the innate lymphoid cells is increased in number. In the chronic atopic dermatitis, there is Th1, Th17, and Th22 response. Interleukin produced by the keratinocytes, especially thymic stromal lymphopoietin, further evokes a Th2 response. In addition to all of this, staphylococcus colonization is increased in the stratum corneum of the patient suffering from the atopic dermatitis. Superantigen secreted by, from these strains also evoke a Th2 response. As a result of disrupted epidermal barrier, there is increased transepidermal water loss and dryness of the skin. One important thing that I would like to mention in the end that, that atopic dermatitis is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. There is no role of the type 1 hypersensitivity in atopic dermatitis except if the patient with the atopic dermatitis develops urticaria, allergic rhinitis, acute asthma or anaphylaxis. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Dr. Namra Aziz.